Okay, so type 3 has three holy ideas associated to it. <coughs> holy harmony, holy law, and holy hope. It's as if type 3 has this amazing capacity when in touch with essence to see the very unfolding of the universe and realizing it as a whole as being completely beautiful and harmonious. <coughs> so m perhaps because threes are the most emotional of all types, when in essence, they just have the capacity, which is one of the divine capacities, of beauty inside and outside. And that means being in complete awe for this whole thing. It's the very, how holy harmony is the capacity of being in awe for the whole of creation and seeing how industrious this whole plan is. Like, how can it be possible that such a perfect logistics department exists to make everything that is be so harmonious? It's ridiculous. It's the one benchmark I need to follow throughout my life. It's the one role model I need to mirror in myself. It's like seeing everything happening, all stars moving. I mean, the tiny little distance a planet has from the sun, if it's a little more towards that way or towards the other way, it wouldn't work. It needs to be just there, and it is, so that it works, and life comes up, and everything is born, and then everything dies, and it's all perfect. It's harmonious, and then something that happens in here impacts something that's happening right now in Japan, like in quantum physics, you know. It's just that realization of the interdependency of all events. But it's not a perspective from within each part. It's just seeing the whole picture. It's, it's having this delightful of opportunity to step down from the stage, go into the audience, get in a seat, in a place that's actually not too central, and watching the show happen, doing nothing, because it's just the witnessing that everything is being done right now. And then, out of that realization of this thing that exists, and and this thing that's the only thing that exists, which is the, the, the moment of here and now, I realized that uh, in the past moments, I have never done anything. Everything has been done, and I will never be able to do anything. It's all happening despite me. And yet, if I didn't exist, an important part of that whole would not exist and the harmony would not be the same. <coughs> That's holy harmony. And then holy law means inside that harmony there are some accidents, there are some deviations, there are some things that, that go off route. And that is an inherent part of harmony. Holy Law talks about the shock points of the Enneagram system when something that started in one way gets diverted another way. That's a rule of existence. Nothing finishes quite in the way it has started. The Law of Seven, which is, in my view, the Law, the Holy Law, 
that threes are in touch with in one of the holy ideas says, things go other ways. Like when you're looking at the sky and all of a sudden you see a shooting star. Can be an asteroid, can be something like that, but it's like, it, it, if you don't look closely, it feels like a disruption in the thing. It may be, but it's sacred and part of the harmony. Like one of those brilliantly composed songs, just going in a completely different way. And then there is holy hope, which is the result in the individual soul of seeing that it's all happening already and I can relax into knowing that it will happen in the next moment. <coughs> that everything we all need will be done. And if it's not yet what all of us would expect, it's because harmony right now is operating in mysterious but good ways, taking us apart from truth, just so that we go back closer to th truth right next. So, what is there to, to worry about? I mean, holy hope is the mental realization that there is no other possibility but everything finishing just right, just well, just positively. And there is no such a thing like trying to think positively when in touch with holy hope. It's just seeing that there is no other possibility. <coughs> Everything will end up just well. That's holy hope. Now, when essence touches the spiritual heart, the individual spiritual heart, uh, what ex gets expressed is veracity. Veracity is the willingness of the heart to be only what it is and nothing else. To be just it. To be the heart and nothing else. And a heart is emotional. And a heart pulsates. And a heart beats. A heart loves. And a heart relaxes. And a heart trusts. And a heart feels pain. That's all the heart needs to do. So when the heart realizes this is all it needs to do, it becomes very true, very sincere, very honest to itself. It's like I don't need to try to be anything else or anyone else. It's like giving up having any willingness to be who I'm not, to be just me. And how can I get in touch with veracity? Well, what I need to do is to come inside, go inside my heart, realizing that if I'm a three, I am a moving heart, basically. And then allow my heart to speak and guide me and take me wherever it feels like I need to go and to do whatever it feels like I need to do. So veracity implies allowing my heart to be my guide. Now, there are numerous ways how threes lose that state. But all those ways 
have to do with mimicking the wrong person. Having found outside there somewhere someone who's not as competent in being in the heart and thinking, I need to be that person. And then when I copy that lifestyle, that way of being, I detach from my heart. Because in reality, nobody else is more competent than I am in being a heart. And whenever I copy anyone else, I'll be downgrading. But threes don't believe that the heart will take them anywhere. Maybe they are right, because this is not yet valued in our world. However, inner work is a business not too concerned with what other people here in our world values or not. We are more concerned with what people outside of this world value. So it's in my view, not a very wise negotiation or exchange when threes give up being who they are and become what others pe other people want them to be. That's called self-deceit. It's like playing a character and getting super identified with that character, becoming the character and not only noticing that. And that happens by means of a defense called identification, in which very rapidly I identify who looks successful out there and saying, yeah, that's what I'm going to be. And I become that, or I try to become that. And when I do that, I'm running away from being who I am. And I may get eventually very confused about who I am, even regarding my type. Because in fact, if I'm copying someone else, then maybe you know, I'm trying to be another type. So what, what should I look at when I look at my own type? Who I am, who I'm trying to be, but I don't know because it's not only deceit, it's self-deceit. I don't know that I'm doing that. Now, in the fixation of vanity, I keep this inner belief that I am actually more central to make things happen than I am. I actually am actually not central at all. As we saw in Holy Harmony, things are already happening despite me. But then it is the, the impression, the, f the false impression, that I am the one making things happen. And I can't go away, because if I do, nothing will happen. So while for everybody in modern Western societies <laughs> it's difficult to stop, for threes it's not only difficult, but there is a sensation that the world will fall apart and a sensation that I will sort of die if I stop being central. Because it's a sensation that nothing really happens if I'm not around. That is the fine of being a three. And the other second and last thing that is the fine is this capacity of adapting to becoming something I'm not, whatever that might be, without noticing, without any kind of effort. It's an automatic and unstoppable adaptation. So let's come back.